So finally, I've categorized into DDL, DML, data control language, and data query language. Okay. Now, if you see here, in the data definition language, we do have the one which changes the structure. Okay. Changing the structure. Now, what you're doing here, create, alter, drop. All you're playing with the structures. Like you can change it, you can drop it, you can alter it. So this becomes DDL command. DML playing with the data, insert, update, delete. Grant, revoke basically comes under data control language. Data query language, as I said, there are many uh, documents where you can see select query either in DML or DQL. But one thing you need to understand is DQL, they're like doing a lot of research and documentation and research papers. They have categorized into different, but I am categorizing into data query language where you start writing the query. And we have the final one, the transactional control language. Okay. Now, in this topic, I'll tell you what are the interview questions that can be asked. The first thing is the moment you go to a, any Power BI interview, the first question they're going to ask is difference between DDL and DML. Okay. This is a question. Now, the second question they'll ask is the second question they'll ask is what is the difference between DDL versus DML. Okay. Now, listen carefully. This answer we have already answered in the class. So, each one has to tell three difference. So, one is data definition language. It's basically the commands which will be changing the structures or you will be altering the structures. The best example commands are create, alter, drop. When come for DML, DML is like playing with a, uh, like manipulating the data like insert, delete, and update, you are manipulating it. So that comes under DML. The second difference you need to tell is, uh, second, second point is give examples. Give the commands like create, alter. Here you give here, insert, and update. Give an example. The third difference, which is a very, very important difference, DDL command cannot be rolled back. DML command can be rolled back. If you don't, this, if you don't tell this point, okay, never expect that the panel will select you. This is a very, very important question. Okay. Say you have this customer information. You have this customer information. In this customer information, if you see here, can I delete only one person? Is it possible? Yes. Can yes. I delete only three persons? Possible? Yes. 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 In the delete statement, we can delete the records only. Either you can delete everything. If you don't give the where condition, you can delete everything. Possibility is there. Or if you give a where condition, you can delete only the certain people. Chances are there. But once if you delete everything, once you delete everything, let's say delete from this. Okay. And you still go and run this. Okay, you can still see that the structure exists. The structure exists, but the data has been deleted. But if you simply go and drop this table, okay, if you go and run the select statement, it is throwing an error. Table does not exist. Even the structure will be dropped. Okay, now to answer this question again, the difference between drop and delete. See, I'll tell you again and again, I have taken more than 2000 interviews. Okay. If as a panelist, I will be expecting some key terminologies. Only if you tell that I will be selecting you. Okay. Now the words, which I will be looking for is drop command. Drop command is a DDL command, which once you drop it, the entire table is dropped, including the structure it cannot be rolled back. Coming to delete. Delete is a DML command where you can delete certain records or you can delete all the records. And fortunately, we can go and roll it back as well. 
we can retrieve back in case of delete. If this three points, if you don't tell, then this does not complete the answer. The third question you may expect is, can you explain TCL commands? What is TCL full form? So TCL commands is basically, if you just see the TCL commands, so TCL commands is like we have a commit rollback and save point. If you want to roll back any transaction, like if you want to retrieve any data, you can use rollback. In, for, in, in, in certain point of time, if you want to save certain transactions and you want to roll it back to certain save points, you have to mark that point as a save point. Save point is like usually to maintain a certain, uh, like, uh, like you, you are going to uh, create certain space for that, you can roll it back to that condition. And commit is, once you commit, it is always going to go and commit all the changes. You can never retrieve back if you are committing. Remember this. Once you run the commit statement, it's done. Okay. Now, this is about TCL. Uh, you can never expect any questions in uh, data control because this is something which is not related to our um, objective as well. Primary key is a uniquely identifying a row in a table. It will not accept duplicate. It will not accept null value. Coming to unique key, Unique key is also similar to a primary key where it will not accept duplicates, but null value can be allowed. The best example I can give for these two columns is Aadhaar card ID. Aadhaar card ID can be considered as a primary key. You have never seen a blank ID in an other card. Never seen. But phone number can be blank. Phone number can be blank. So phone number is your wish. But if you give it, you need to give your unique phone number. You cannot give your friend's phone number. But there is one exemption here. You can avoid giving it. If you feel unsecure, you can avoid giving it. But that will not happen in terms of other card ID. Other card ID has to be there. Since I've taken almost 2000 interviews, I'm giving you a hint. Every interview, the questions they're asking, always don't go with the book definition or a Google definition. Okay, whatever I'm saying, you did not tell them, but you need to make them understand. If I was a candidate like you, if I was a student like you, I would have always brought an example. If they ask this question, Unique was a primary key. Unique is unique unique records where it will have different values but it will can accept null values coming to a primary key primary key will not accept duplicates it will not accept null values the best example is other card id or a pan card id is for a primary key phone number where it is given as an optional can be considered as a unique key is this question clear I will leave my profession if they don't ask this question in an interview. Coming to the 10th question, what is the difference between a where condition and a having condition? Where condition is used for the actual column. Where condition is used to filter the records with the actual columns. whereas Having condition is used to filter the aggregated columns, right? Yes. Going forward, going forward, wherever you are going to apply a condition for an aggregation, you have to use group I. One more thing I'll tell you. One more thing I'll tell you. If I don't use aggregation function, group I was not necessary, right? Only I have added a count of star. That's why group I is required because any value that I'm adding before the aggregation function, that has to be included in the group I. This is my thumb rule. Now also you have to remember, having clause will never come if there is no group I. 
because having clause clearly says you have to aggregate the values if you want to filter the aggregated values then having conditions comes